morning, everyone. It's good, good to be able to gather together on this uh, Wednesday morning, the 22nd of April, for morning prayer. In our readings today, we continue with um, readings from Exodus as we hear about the people of Israel uh, coming into the desert. And then we hear some more of Paul's lovely letter to the Colossians. And so we begin with our opening responses. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So we come to the Easter anthems from 1 Corinthians and uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we keep a few moments of silence. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We have two psalms this morning, Psalm 16 and Psalm 30. And the refrain to Psalm 16, The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup, in your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night, watch it, night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices, my flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight now and forever. 
And so to Psalm 30, the refrain, you brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my, tri my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. In my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. Lord, you hide your face when we trust in ourselves, strip us of false security, and we clothe us in your praise, that we may know you as the one who raises us from death, as you raised your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so our first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, and beginning at verse 11. Moses and the people of Israel have crossed uh, the Red Sea and are now in the wilderness. And the complaints are beginning. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person, according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it as much as needed, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord had commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning as Moses commanded them, and it did not become foul, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. For six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. On the se seventh day some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore on the sixth day 
He gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it to be kept throughout your generations, in order that they may see the food with which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar, and put an omer of manna in it, and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the covenant for safekeeping. The Israelites ate manna for forty years, until they came to a habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan, and Omer is, an, is a tenth of an ephah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to move on now to the second reading uh, from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2. He writes this. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches, all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to a cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so to our responses. Death is swallowed up in victory, where, O oh, death, is your sting. Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised, where, O oh, death, is your sting. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory, where, O oh, death, is your sting. So we come to the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. And so we come to prayer. Shall we pray? Holy God, we thank you for this beautiful new day. We thank you for the gift of sleep, if we found it, and if it found us. We thank you, Lord, for the cycle of life, and we thank you for your commandment to keep the Sabbath. We recognise, Lord, and probably more and more we recognise at this time, that we have often run ourselves into the ground, that we have often chased things that were never there for us. <clears throat> And Lord, as we come to this time when some have had to slow down and stop, we pray that this might be a time of re-evaluation for all of us. A time of coming to realise what is truly important. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. But Lord, we know too there are many who are working harder and harder and who are working long hours to overcome um, the movement and the spread of a virus that is in danger of overtaking the world. And so Lord, we in our cycle of prayer, we pray especially today for scientists and researchers who are looking for a vaccine into uh, this virus. Lord, we pray for them. We thank you for their ingen ingenuity and their creativity. We thank you for their logic and their vision. We thank you for their intellect and their exploration. And we pray for them that they will bear the fruit of their labour. We thank you for announcements made by the government yesterday of some progress. But Lord, we know we're a long way off. We pray, Lord, though. We pray for a solution to this situation. So that we might be free to live our lives and to live them well. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. <clears throat> pray for all those heading into work in our hospitals and doctors' surgeries, for those who are carers in our communities, for those who are carers in our nursing homes and residential homes. We pray, Lord, for each one today as they go into work, not knowing what they'll face that they might know wisdom, <clears throat> they might know blessing. And Lord, that they might have the energy and the strength to deal with each moment of each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, too, for those in our emergency services, we pray for the ambulance service and all who work in it on the front line and in the back room. 
We pray for the, our police service, for our fire service, some of whom are retraining to work with the ambulance service. We pray for our armed forces and for all who are dealing with the logistics of moving things from one place to another. And those who are dealing with the planning of new hospitals. Lord, help us not to be complacent and to remember that there are many working out there in the front line and that that's, we still have a virus among us <clears throat> that can cause great illness and sometimes death. So, Lord, bless them, each one, and hold us back, Lord, from wanting to do what we want to do because we want to express our freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who are bereaved at this time and those who are mourning, for those who are finding it difficult to make sense of what's happening among us. We pray, Lord, for those who are anxious and isolated and separated from loved ones. And for those are confused. Pray especially, Lord, for those with dementia. We must be finding this a very confusing world to be in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Collect for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So thank you for joining me this morning. It's lovely to be able to share together again. It's another beautiful sunny day outside. Um, I wish you well in it and pray God's blessing upon each of you. So lots of love to all of you and do have a good day. God bless. <laughs>